Uh, ha, ha. Here, here we go again. <sighs> Star Wars fan survey claims less Jedi hate is based on political beliefs. I sense something. Uh, yeah, that would be bullshit, my lord. <laughs> but uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll handle it from here. You can go about the business of uh, murdering Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? This is Phil. Um, so, you know, ever since The Last Jedi came out, from time to time, uh, people will go and they'll conduct some type of a survey or do some uh, form of a study uh, where they compile information and they try to figure out why people didn't like this movie. Uh, and, and these reports have everything to do uh, with anything besides the fact that people just found it to be a fundamentally poor movie uh, that subverted expectations uh, in a way uh, that wasn't done to uh, really be daring or bold like some of the supporters of this film might actually claim it to be but it was almost done to fly in the face of any fan theory uh, just for the simple need to actually be subversive so there, you know and with the film's director Ryan Johnson he's pretty much gone on record saying that this is the type of movie that he wants to create where half of the audience loves it and half of the audience walks out in disgust before the film has even come to a close so uh, you know kind of ignoring this whole notion that uh, fans just might have not liked it because uh, it really didn't appeal to what they've come to expect as fans or as customers of this particular franchise uh, it seems to escape people they're looking for a different reason why so um, people have done studies with uh, claiming that people who go after Ryan Johnson are actually Russian trolls uh, which then again proves the point that it's not the actual fans so you, you, you've proven that point to be correct that yeah the fans aren't necessarily going after him. maybe it's Russian bots you know or you know with this it takes the different approach that uh, the hate stands from some type of a political point of view now while I don't disagree that uh, there might be fans uh, who hate this movie and have a certain type of political standpoint not everybody across the board uh, is a Republican or a Democrat or a, a libertarian or, or, or an independent uh, people uh, from all walks of life have issues with this movie and the same thing can be said for race and gender so and and everybody uh, makes the same arguments they all have the same issues so when you get websites like movie web we have a you know Kevin Berwick uh, you know and a bunch of these other shill sites that uh, come out in defense of the last Jedi uh, you know along with all the Ryan Johnson supporters and the last Jedi supporters they fall back on this argument that the people that didn't like the movie are racist sexist misogynist 40 year old white guys who are overweight and live in their mom's basement and have a neck beard and it's not the case <laughs> and look not that I'm saying there might be some guys who unfortunately fall into that category and they're kicking themselves in the ass, <laughs> but this is not the group of people that oppose this movie. And it, it, it further gets shot full of holes when you do see that there are people uh, from all walks of life who are uh, also female and who are also black and Hispanic and Asian. And, and again, all walks of life have issues the star wars universe uh the universe of fans if you will is is just a sprawling audience of people it's a, it's a very diverse the star wars has always stood for diversity well before uh you know people hijacked uh, this franchise to kind of push their own uh, ideological need for diversity and push for something a little bit more on the nose when it always stood for diverse culture uh, and, and racial harmony without having to hit people over the head with it. Um, so let's get into this article over on uh, movieweb.com. Again, that's where this is being featured. And, uh, you know, this, this, the author is Kevin Berwick. And uh, when he saw uh, that there was a survey that came out that claims The Last Jedi Hate is based on political beliefs and it has nothing to do with the actual narrative of this movie, this dumpster fire of a movie, uh, I'm sure his pants got exceptionally tight, <laughs> you know, because he, he, he could just pass the buck of blame. 
game. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a hot potato uh, that just gets passed over to the next theory. It's any other theory aside from the fact that uh, people had actual issues with the movie itself. So, you know, let's get started and see what all this nonsense uh, is about. And here we see Donald Trump and, uh, you know, one could only hope he's firing Ryan Johnson or maybe Kevin Berwick. Uh, let your imagination run wild. Uh, says, uh, our political beliefs, the main reason for the hate behind The Last Jedi. Social scientist uh, Mark H. White II, uh, so there's two of him running around, <laughs> conducted a survey of Star Wars fandom and has come to the conclusion that politics may come into play when looking at the backlash of Ryan Johnson's first foray into the franchise and hopefully last. Uh, although, you know, it, it appears that he's going to be helping out with uh, Benioff and Weiss for their trilogy, which, I mean, uh, given how the, the Game of Thrones ended, uh, this couldn't be a, a worse matchup uh, to have all three of these guys together. And as far as subversion is concerned with storytelling, it's just, it, it, <laughs> it feels like a complete nightmare. Um, the Last Jedi hit theaters at the end of 2017 and received praise from fans and critics along uh, with criticism from the start with many calling the movie PC and bashing it for pandering feminism. Uh, Mark H. White, uh, I'm not going to keep calling him the seconds, uh, previous study has broken Star Wars fans into three distinct groups. These include the prequel skeptics, who love the saga but rate the prequels uh, lower than the rest, saga lovers who rate everything highly, uh, and Last Jedi disowners who rate only the Last Jedi very negatively. Um, geez, I, I guess I would fall into prequel skeptics, although I don't I don't hate the prequels. I don't rate them as high as the original trilogy, but the Clone Wars has gone a long way in, in really elevating the prequels for me. So it's kind of a weird... Uh, I guess I'm, a, I'm kind of in a gray area of being a, a prequel skeptic, um, but certainly, certainly not a hater. Uh, anyway, uh, he then went about further interviewing in terms of what he calls hostile sexism uh, <laughs> and benevolent sexism. Uh, White had this to say about his findings. Uh, the Last Jedi disowners tended to score higher on sexism, though, as you can see, not everyone who hates The Last Jedi is sexist. This demonstrates some uh, empirical evidence that sexism plays a role in attitudes toward The Last Jedi. Next, Mark White looked into PC beliefs and conservatism to see if he could find a direct correlation. In addition to having participants define their political correctness, White also had participants rate themselves on a scale from very liberal to very conservative. The findings defined a correlation between sexism, conservative views, and negative outlook towards political correctness. White says, the last Jedi disowners are more likely to believe political correctness is a negative force in society and a less politically liberal. Looking at Mark White's studies even further, he found that Star Wars fans who had more sexist and anti-PC beliefs were more likely to enjoy the original and prequel trilogies, but less likely to enjoy the sequel trilogy. The study also discovers The Last Jedi disowners were also more sexist and anti-PC, which gave negative reactions to female characters included Vice Admiral Haldo, Rey, and Rose Teagle, all of which have been on the receiving end of online hostility. Both Kelly Marie Tran and Daisy Ridley have removed themselves from social media as a result. Okay, well look, I mean, as far as these three female characters are concerned, we all have issues with them, but it doesn't have anything to do with them being female. They just so happen to be female. And that's the, you know, look, that's the way that they were deliberately casted. You know, and that you could blame that on casting. Uh, blame that on uh, the writers. Vice Admiral Ol Holdo didn't have to be cast as Laura Dern, and it still would have been just as insufferable a character. If you would have had some kind of pompous, arrogant, uh, information withholding male character who stood there and stared down his nose at Poe Dameron and undercut him and everything he meant to the resistance, uh, people would have hated that character. But instead of accepting responsibility for the shortcomings of a poorly crafted character uh, and their purpose in a story, uh, the easy thing to do is to fall back on the fact that the fans, it's the fault of the fans, they don't like women in power. Uh, that's the issue. That's the real issue here. It couldn't be the fact that Vice Admiral Haldo is just awful or uh, the way that they wrote that character was terrible. That has nothing to do with Laura Dern. People like Laura Dern. For the most part, I, I haven't seen anybody really have an issue with Laura Dern, uh, the actress. I mean, she's in Jurassic Park. It's a beloved movie. I've never had, I've never heard anybody say, uh, man, Jurassic Park is one of the greatest movies ever created. Uh, it's a classic by all standards. It's one of Spielberg's 
finest uh, you know sci-fi adventure movies uh, that he ever put to film. Uh, but uh, Laura Dern really brings it down a notch. I mean, nobody has an axe to grind with Laura Dern. Uh, if if a character is presented the right way, it doesn't matter if it's a male or it's a female or what gender or what or what race it is. And we've gone over this a million times. But then these reports they keep coming out and they, they keep trying to find a different angle uh, as to why a certain section of the fans did not like this movie. I mean, you move on to these other characters. Rose Tico is just, really, what's her purpose? There's nothing exciting about the character. Uh, she really doesn't do anything for the movie to advance anything. Her sister has far less screen time than her. She's on there for a blip, and she seems like a far more interesting character. Uh, she should have survived. She should have been the one person to survive that attack, as far as all the bombers are concerned, and then they could have used her. Um, I don't find anything... Uh, great about Rose Tico uh, or, or exciting or inspirational. I, look, people like to see themselves up on screen for some reason. It, it, they feel validated because Rose Tico looks like a certain section of the population. Uh, but that's not the reason why you put a character into a story, uh, just to, so people can feel validated to see themselves up there. Uh, you want to see a character uh, give some weight and heft to the story that they they introduce something new and exciting or, or take the story in a different direction that you didn't see coming that canto bite sequence uh where rose gets all political what a waste of time um it, that thing could have been trimmed down immensely it didn't need for all that political nonsense to be thrown in there and, and quite honestly uh, poe dameron uh, instead of being marginalized and undercut back on the command ship, uh, he should have left with Finn to go on that mission himself. Uh, with those two, again, we could have got some of that great chemistry that we saw in the original Force Awakens, and we could have got further development between those two characters and their friendship, and not in a shipping way. Uh, not that they, you know these guys end up in a cell and then they have like wild Samoan butt sex with each other. That's just a bunch of nonsense too. With all these weirdo shippers. But look, I mean, Rose Tico really serves no grand purpose to the overall story. I mean, she was just an additional character that was thrown in there. For what real purpose? They couldn't make do with the characters that they already had there. She's not like her character was brought in and all of a sudden it's the Lando Calrissian of, of the new trilogy, of the sequel trilogy. She doesn't feel that important to the whole grand scheme of things. She just doesn't. And her, her she's not that interesting. Her story is not as interesting as Lando Calrissian's story in The Empire Strikes Back. Her inclusion uh, didn't amount to anything. And, and really, she's cringeworthy. So you have one character here who's completely insufferable. Then you have one character here who's absolutely cringeworthy. Uh, and then you have Ray. And Ray is, is look, uh, in concept, Ray is not a bad character. She's not. Uh, it's just. She's too OP, right? She's overpowered. Uh, things come too easy for her. She doesn't suffer to earn anything. Nothing feels earned with her. And that's the problem with Ray. It's not that people can't get behind her because she's a female. Uh, they don't like the character or they have issues. I don't hate the character of Ray. I have issues with the character of Ray. And the issues are, look, things come too easy. And none of her skill set feels earned. There's no way that she should be able to defeat Luke Skywalker, a Jedi Master of nearly 40 years uh, in any kind of a battle. I don't care how powerful she is with the Force. Luke is Im immensely powerful with the Force, uh, and more so than she is. He's a skilled Force wielder. Uh, she should not be able to beat him in one-on-one -on -one combat, whether it's by lightsaber or with a stick fight. Whatever it is, a two wiffle ball bats, she should not be able to defeat him. It's just nonsense. These are the types of things, these are the types of character decisions that have nothing to do with them being female and everything to do with them being bad characters or poorly written and executed on the screen within the confines of that movie. And that's the problem that we have. It has nothing to do with their gender. So stop with the bullshit, all right? Uh, let's move on. As far as these people also removing themselves uh, from social media, I don't doubt that they were trolled. But that article uh, that... Uh, Kelly wrote the open op-ed on the New York Times, I believe it was. She never goes on and says that she was uh, bullied off of the internet by trolls. She does go on to say that she had issues with the way that society says she should feel about herself and how she should be portrayed. And she was talking about Hollywood and she was talking about advertising and companies and the media. She did not say anything about fans. So uh, again, it's how you want to interpret these things. I'm sure she had issues. I'm sure she was trolled uh, by toxic fans. If you want to throw that term out there, yeah, they're out there. Uh, you know, not everybody is 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 a complete angel as far as these things are concerned. But um, you know, the media took that story, they they twisted that narrative and ran with that as well. 
Uh, so let's, uh, I'm getting exhausted here. Let's, <laughs> let's finish this. this Kevin Burwick. Uh, in closing, uh, Mark H. White's sample size is only 5,000, which is relatively small. As he notes several times throughout the breakdown of his study, it does not represent all Star Wars fans. It does, however, give a broad look at some of the reasoning behind the hate for The Last Jedi and why certain clusters of fans enjoy the sets of movies that they do. Uh, you can head over to Mark H. White's website to look at his findings to see if you agree or disagree. And again, uh, I read, I went over there, uh, I read his whole report. The way he breaks it down, uh, it, it, it does profile people in a certain way, uh, and the answers do correspond with the argument that he's putting forth here. But at the end of the day, uh, I do believe that the issues with The Last Jedi go well above and beyond anything that has to do with any type of real political affiliation. I mean, it just it's, it's a transcendent movie in a way that Ryan Johnson probably didn't want it to be, or at least Disney didn't want it to be. Who knows what's going on in that a big, weird, and round head of his. But as far as Disney is concerned, uh, they didn't want it to be this polarizing movie because it's not healthy for the overall franchise. This movie, people went after it because they had issues with it as it related to uh, their characters that they've known for years and how they felt that they would behave in certain types of situations uh, and the characters that were introduced be behaving in nonsensical ways uh, that really didn't do anything to improve upon the narrative. If anything, they, they knocked it down a peg. And really, The Last Jedi is a movie. It just doesn't. It's a void. It's a black hole in the middle of a trilogy. It does nothing to really progress the story. Now, you have to really dig deep uh, to find the value in this movie and what it did for this trilogy. But with J.J. Abrams coming in and having to actually go back and essentially shoot episode 8.5 and 9 to kind of retcon certain things from The Last Jedi, uh, and then bring everything up to a point where he could then proceed and tell his story in Episode Nine, The Rise of Skywalker. I mean, the proof is in the pudding right there. There's a lot that needs to be fixed, uh, and there is a certain level of validation in that, that J.J. Abrams has to come back, and he look, he has to give us the Knights of Ren that didn't show up, in, and he has to figure out a way why they didn't show up uh, in The Last Jedi. He has to, he's gonna possibly go back and take care of Rey's lineage or give her some kind of lineage. Uh, he has to go back in, he has to put that helmet back on uh, uh, Adam Driver's big stupid head and, and give us a, a villain that we that we feel intimidated by, <laughs> by again. Um, you know, it, it, all of these things. I mean, look, there was talk of him actually bringing Luke Skywalker back. Um, you know, and by bringing him back, I mean, you know, not as a force ghost, but actually bringing him back from the dead. So the, the, the problems that people have with The Last Jedi, it's easy to say let's just take the fans and lump them into these categories and then we it, it, it puts a nice bow on it you know and it and it diffuses uh the idea that this actually has something to do with the movie and the choices that were made by the creators it, it absolves them of having any kind of responsibility and that's just not the case uh, and that's one of the reasons why the fans have been so persistent and they've kept on uh, Ryan Johnson because he just won't budge he just doesn't give a shit and the fans were like all right well you know look, look uh, we could do this for as long as you can do this <laughs> you know and uh, the, you know it, it's this kind of weird perpetual trolling that's been going on on both sides uh, and uh, you know at, at the end of the day uh, the fans spoke you know you look at Solo Solo came out it bombed that was a loss that was a big L that uh, Star Wars and Lucasfilm and Disney got served and it shook uh, their plans. It shook it to the core. They changed course. Absolutely changed course after that whole entire debacle. Uh, and that's why Star Wars is going away after Episode Nine for a little bit, for a few years. So uh, anyway, guys, um, uh, that's what I got to say about this article. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you think it's nonsense? I just think that uh, with everything that happened with The Last Jedi, I, I think it, the movie just goes above and beyond what a person's political beliefs are. Okay? I, look, I don't I'm not a big political person. Uh, really, if all my movies were apolitical and just had subtext, political subtext, I wouldn't mind that. But I don't like stuff that's on the nose. Uh, and that's, that's why I'm kind of here, because I, I got really aggravated uh, with The Last Jedi and everything that it tried to do. And, and I realized that all of these politics were starting to get inserted into my movies and my franchises. And I just, I didn't want that. You know, at the end of the day, all I really want is a fun story. And if it's, if it's a part of a franchise, 
uh, that I grew up on, that I love, that I cherish, uh, that I buy merchandise and I support uh, by going to see the movies and I buy the Blu-rays and I watch them at home and I, I proselytize the greatness of these uh, franchises to uh, friends and family and you know take a girlfriend to see it and everything. Uh, I, I don't want these movies to where they were an escape to then fall uh, into this weird modern day agenda driven storytelling where it takes something that was apolitical uh, and it turns it into uh, some type of agenda that's squarely on the nose or you can you can sniff it out you could you could it's easily distinguishable now i don't mind allegorical subtext i don't mind metaphors i don't mind things that are taken from something that happens in the real world and it's used as inspiration to tell a story a cohesive narrative and give motivations to get that feel rooted in some type of realistic human behavior as to why my characters and my stories are making these decisions but i don't want my stories to be making a political statement i just don't want that i go to these movies for escapism right star wars ghostbusters Aliens, Predator, Harry Potter, Terminator, Men in Black, uh, you know, whatever it is, these big science fiction movies, you know, the, these big tentpole franchises, all of these types of movies, they, they, you know, even, even the Marvel movies, you know, they're dipping their toes in those, in those dangerous waters now and um a lot of fans will will get up there and they'll yell loudly and they say please don't do this this is not what they want and they say well you know what these movies aren't made for you well they were made for us when we gave you billions of dollars at the box office what's changed uh you know and and that's that's something that uh, hollywood just seems to be going in a different direction and they're leaving their fans behind and it's a bad business move and it's not sustainable on a long enough period of time because we've seen that the audience that they're trying to pander to, they just don't spend that kind of money, the kind of money that built these franchises up to what they are today. So anyway, guys, uh, let me know how you feel down below. Uh, please like, comment, first time here, subscribe. You know how it goes. Uh, I will talk to you guys sometime soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend if I don't see you uh, or speak to you. And uh, as always, be happy, be safe, be healthy. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>